The failure to include female bodies in design affects women's lives. It makes them poorer, it makes them sicker, and when it comes to car design, it's killing them. Hi, my name is Caroline Criado Perez, and I'm a writer and author of Invisible Women Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. The gender data gap is the name for the fact that the vast majority of information that we have collected historically and continue to collect has been based on men. Typical male lifestyle patterns and male bodies, everything from economic data to urban planning data to transport data to medical data has mainly been collected on men. And what that means is that pretty much everything in the world from the office you work in to the transport you use to get there to the medical treatment you receive to the phone in your hand to the apps on that phone have been designed to work for men. And the result of that is that most things in the world just don't work that well for women. When we think of car crashes, many of us may be thinking of young men, which is understandable. Men are more likely to be involved in a car crash than women, which means they dominate the stats of those who are injured in car crashes. But when a woman is involved in a car crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured than a man in the same car crash, and 71% more likely to be moderately injured. She is also 17% more likely to die. There's a very simple reason for this. For decades, the only car crash test dummy that was used was based on a 50th percentile male, and it is still the main dummy that is used in car crash safety test. And the result of this is that the car is designed all wrong for women. Women tend to sit further forward than men when they're driving. This is because of needing to reach things like the pedals and see over the steering wheel, quite an important part of driving. But what that means is that a woman is put out of what is called the standard seating position. Obviously, this is standard for the average male. And that means that she is at higher risk in a frontal collision. But it doesn't stop there. Seat belts have not been designed to accommodate breasts, quite a normal part of a female physique. But the problem with that is that women are therefore wearing seat belts often what is called improperly. Uh, we don't know where to put them in relation to the boobs. But then you've also got the issue of the seat backs, which are too firm. Now this isn't an issue of comfort. This is that seats have been designed to accommodate the height and weight of a bigger body than the body of the average woman. And what that means is that if a woman is in a car crash, she gets thrown further forward than a man in the same car crash. So what have you got? You've got the woman's already sitting too far forward, she's wearing her seatbelt improperly, and then she gets thrown forward. And that is why, if a woman is in a car crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 17% more likely to die than a man in the same car crash. Women are also at higher risk in rear-end collisions. Women have less muscle on our necks and upper torso than men on average, which makes us more vulnerable to whiplash. Women are actually up to three times more likely to suffer whiplash than men in a car crash. And car design has amplified this vulnerability. That's partly those pesky seat backs again, but it's also to do with the type of headrest that is used. And some headrests which have been designed to fix whiplash made it better for men, but far worse for women. Although a pregnant car crash test dummy was actually created back in 1996, its use is still not mandated either in the US or the EU. In fact, even though car crashes are the number one cause of fetal death from trauma, we still haven't even developed a seatbelt that works for 62% of third trimester pregnant women. But don't despair, there is some good news. The EU belatedly realised that women exist in 2015, and they introduced what they call a female car crash test dummy. It's debatable how much this actually is a female car crash test dummy because it's really just a scaled down male dummy. A very, very scaled down to about the size of a 12 year old child car crash test dummy. But nevertheless, the scaled down dummy does now exist. And it is used in one out of the five regulatory tests, but only in the passenger seat. Clearly what is needed is a wholesale redesign of cars using female data as well as male data. We live in a world where all of us men and women, are biased towards thinking of men when we think we're speaking gender neutrally. The truth is, most of us don't even notice when we've forgotten to include women. The failure to include female bodies in design affects women's lives. It makes them poorer, it makes them sicker, and when it comes to car design, it's killing them.